come. Yes, we can. Person, woman, man, camera, TV. What the fuck is wrong with you? Boom. There he is. Sorry about that. Hi, welcome to Welcome, <laughs> welcome to What Franklin. I'm Chip Franklin here with you on this uh, Friday. A lot going on, keeping an eye on the market. Uh, we will, um, after yesterday's, well, I guess those the bad numbers uh, that indicate maybe the Fed is actually uh, affecting the economy. We'll get to that a little bit later on in the show. We'll try to figure out if you give somebody a Hanukkah or a Christmas gift, is that tax deductible? Yeah. And also infectious disease specialist Rick Heller will join us on the latest on COVID and the flu and this RSV. And please tell me you got a shot, right? You got a flu shot? I mean, did we learn anything in the last three years? Um, of course, the big story today, um, and this is weirdly coincidental, is uh, Elon Musk's bloodbath yesterday. It's been, um, you know, it, it's, it's like a Saturday night massacre. It reminds me a little bit of that old Richard Nixon uh, Saturday night when he fired the special prosecutor in his investigation. This sort of has that same feel. Um, we'll get to that coming up in just a second. But I don't know if you guys have uh, been following this this 30-year-old Bankman kid that, um, well, some people compared him to Bernie Madoff, which is not fair because I had friends that lost money to Bernie Madoff. But the real question is, um, did the people that came along for the FTX, which is his cryptocurrency, he was kind of, in effect, a middleman, which cryptocurrency is not supposed to have. But famous people like uh, Larry David and uh, Tom Brady did commercials. And the question is now, do, do they have to really worry about, about anything coming forward, right? Can I talk to you about something? We talked about it. I got another 10 years left. Not that. This is big. What do you think? I'm in. Let's call everyone. Hey, yeah, I'm in. Yeah, sounds good. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. This guy. First, even if you wanted to come back, we wouldn't take you. Yes, you would. Yeah, yeah we, we would. would. You're right, we would. What's up? I'm getting into crypto. With FTX. You in? I believe I'm in, but still hate you. Understood. Is he in? Yep. Did he say he hates you? He did. I get it. All right, so joining me right now is uh, former prosecutor, now criminal defense attorney, Randy Zellin, old friend of the show. Um, I'm just looking at a couple of articles here. One is on Squawk on CNBC. Uh, and, um, you know, they go through the whole thing explaining what cryptocurrency is to people. Good luck there. Uh, but there's on December 12th, FTX founder Sam Bankman Fried was charged with and arrested for violation of, secur of security laws. La da 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 da. The, the, now the, the account holders feel like they were misled. Um, is there anything in that commercial that would get somebody in trouble? I mean, are these celebrities really in any kind of uh, harm's way from civil or possibly even criminal? Potentially, yes. First of all, I mean, Tom Brady really is. And they all are such good actors, which is a blessing. But in this instance, could be a curse. He really should have taken the $37.5 million and gone into the broadcast booth instead of being six and seven and no wife in, in Tampa. But that's another conversation for another time. But here's the reality of the situation. The Securities and Exchange Commission, the Federal Trade Commission, regulators, law enforcement, they will look at a celebrity. And the first thing they will be interested in saying is, so what was your motivation for saying I'm in? Money. I really hope. I mean, they're hired to, I mean, couldn't you go I, right down the list? Well, here's the thing. The law says you cannot go and hype tout a security without disclosing whether or not you're being compensated. So when you say I'm in, are you in because you really dig this security or are you in because you're being paid to say you're in? And the investing public has a right to know whether or not Tom Brady is saying I'm in and you should be in because he's being paid to say that and for no other reason. And that is a violation of securities law. It could be a violation of criminal law in terms of being a, a crime of fraud, of securities fraud. It, it, it potentially violates a whole host 
of laws. And we've seen other celebrities get jammed up. DJ Khaled, uh, Floyd Merriweather. Uh, I'm sorry, Floyd Mayweather. So what happens is law enforcement loves to do this to celebrities. Why? Is this General the Treasury the law ter- enforcement we're talking about or FBI? What's that? Is this Treasury's long, uh, um, law enforcement arm or the this FBI? Is, this is DOJ, so it could be the FBI. Um, it certainly could be the Securities and Exchange Commission who has their enforcement arm. That's not criminal, but they work together with the Department of Justice. So law enforcement regulators, they love to go after high profile people. Why? Because it's general deterrence. It sends a message to Randy Zell and say, oh, my God, if Tom Brady can get into trouble, uh, I'm not doing this. OK, um, is this a uh, Dodd-Frank period, uh, a piece of legislation or how far back does this go? Well, you're going back to, quite frankly, you have the 1933 Act, the 1934 Exchange Act, which all talk about anti-fraud. You've got anti-touting. And again, I don't want to get too deeply into the legalese, but the reality is if I go on your show and I start saying this is the greatest show ever, Chip Franklin is the greatest ever, you all have to tune in. You're all nuts if you don't tune in. It's one thing if I say it because... That's how I feel. But if I'm being paid to say that, and now I'm misleading people because I'm being paid. Hold on, Randy. That's the soul of advertising. When when you see somebody in advertising, but securities work differently. An investor. Come on. Why do they work differently than 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 Jack Daniels? So you got some celebrity going on, Jack Daniels, and some kid goes, "Wow!" So I got to drink Jack Daniels because I love Joe Celebrity. No, but securities work differently because when I'm taking my rent money, when I'm taking my kids' college tuition, and I'm investing it in crypto, I have a right to know whether Tom Brady is telling me, hell, if he's in, I should be in. Is he saying that because he's done his homework um, and now I should do it? But also remember something else. Is Tom Brady acting as an unregistered investment advisor, an unregistered broker dealer, an unregistered represent a uh, registered representative and, and un, un, okay. unlicensed? All of these things. You're talking about highly regulated industries. Why? Because when I take my rent money and I invest and I lose it all and now I'm out in the street, Man. the government's. Look well, so why, why does it, but why doesn't the government protect people from other products with the same due diligence? Well, that's a good question. I can tell uh, you. Again, I'm going to tell you the answer. Well, the, the answer is, quite frankly, again, when you're talking about investing. You're talking about protecting is, rich white people is what you're well, talking about. Well, it's not only rich white people. It's rich and poor people of any color who get led down a primrose path. And not everybody invests with Bernie Madoff. People who would invest with Randy Zellin, who's a shyster. The the securities markets are highly regulated for a reason, because we don't want people in homeless shelters after they invested all of their money on some crap that was a pump and dump or a Ponzi scheme. For those who don't know, a pump and dump is when a person pretends to uh, love a product and and gets the price up uh, through advertising or through a show like this, maybe. And then as soon as it reaches a point, they sell their their uh, stake. Um, and they basically got the price up by telling everybody it was good. People trusted them. I mean, but th- again, this is at the heart of advertising. And I think that's the kind of what the point I wanted to get to here that really gets me. Um, and, you know, looking forward. So to answer the, the let's go back to the first question. Um, are they in trouble? And, and how how do, how long does something like this go? How long before we know? It all depends on, first of all, and primarily, whether or not they've been compensated. And if they've been compensated, they been compensated. and if they've been compensated, has that compensation been disclosed? So if that, if you check off the box, yes, it's been disclosed, that goes a long way. But still, particularly with FBX, with, I mean, you're talking about, I mean, the guy took a $1 billion loan. We are talking about so much money having disappeared so quickly. And, and the Steph Currys and the Tom Brady's of the world, they're, they're heroes. They're idolized. So, yes, is Randy <laughs> Zellin going to be saying, oh, my God, Brady and Curry invested? Honey, I, I, I call, call the bank. Uh, we're, we're loading up on FTX. Yeah. I, I mean, right. Last is, question. Right. So I, I, I stupidly, I did not include um, the Larry David ad in my bit in Larry in the Larry David ad. He doesn't believe 
in cryptocurrency. The whole time he's going, nah, I don't believe it. Nah, you know, Larry, right? So can you make a case saying that, you know, he was never in? I, I mean, you could, but then if you look at Larry David's sense of humor, yeah, okay. um, and it, it's all always flipping it on its head, it's sometimes hard to tell between reality and sarcasm. What, is that, um, what will happen if they do um, charge uh, Brady, not with a, a, a criminal offense, right? It'd be a civil offense, probably. He'd be fined, right? Most probably. Well, you're talking about the potential fine, disgorgement of anything that you got, uh, legal fees. Yeah. For sure. Penalties. I mean, wow. it's really okay. it's, it, it, it's terrible because, again, it really was such a great ad. Um, and to see and listen. Sam well, and then, you know, Matt Damon was plugging another cryptocurrency, not the FTX stuff. So he's OK. Right. He's Bankman safe. Yeah. I mean, Bankman Freed is presumed innocent. And, you know, me, white collar criminal defense guy. I, I truly believe in that. But it, it's it, it's not okay. looking good. All right. Um, the uh, Elon Musk saga. And I got to ask you about this. Uh, it was reported that Aaron Rupar, who has about oh, close to a million followers, and we're going to be joined by some folks who have high numbers in a few minutes as well. A couple big parts of this story. Um, uh, Rupar said, I didn't post anything remotely controversial today or anytime recently, nor anything that violated the rules as I understand them. And people, I mean, it's it's on the front page of every every newspaper today. Newspaper, listen to me. On every, uh, <laughs> it's everywhere. Here's a little bit of it for the people that just uh, tuned in. This was New York Times technology reporter Ryan Mack's last tweet before his Twitter account got suddenly and mysteriously suspended tonight. Quote, me setting up my Mastodon account, referring to a new Twitter competitor. And then a meme of Simpsons character Ralph Wiggum saying, I'm in danger. Now, the joke here is that this New York Times reporter knew the odds were good that his account might be suspended. Not because anyone told him it would be, not because he did anything wrong, but because he fit tonight's pattern. Tonight, Twitter suspended the accounts of more than half a dozen journalists from CNN, The New York Times, The Washington Post, and other outlets. The suspensions came without warning or explanation. But many... I want to get into this. I want to bring in a couple of friends of mine. Uh, uh, Brian Karam, White House correspondent, author of... Look at him. Author of Free the Press, uh, which is uh, in its fourth printing. Congratulations, as always. And then Jojo from Jurors, a good friend and influencer on uh, Twitter as well. Uh, Randy Zell, an attorney here. Um, guys, I don't know if you heard about this. There's a woman uh, whose name is... Oh, why did I have this open? I had her account. I just I was on Twitter last night and I saw a group chat and it had like 3,300 people in it. And um, the, the, the person that hosting it was a BuzzFeed reporter. And who showed up in the chat but Elon Musk? And dun, dun, dun. So, did you guys hear about this? No, it's not fake because I checked no, his voice. I, I didn't say it was fake. <laughs> okay, let's listen up a little bit. This is Musk saying, he uses a word I never heard before called doxing. But this is, I won't play this whole thing, but I want you to hear just a little bit of this. Listen up. In the last few hours with a, a handful of journalists uh, being banned. Uh, yeah. Um, well, as I'm sure everyone who's been doxing uh, would agree, you know, uh, showing real-time uh, information about somebody's location is uh, inappropriate. And I think everyone on this call would not like that to be done put to them. And, and there is not going to be any distinction in the future between journalists, so-called journalists, and, and regular people. Everyone's going to be treated the same. You're not special because you're a journalist. You're, you're just, you're, you're a Twitter, you're, just, you're a citizen. Um, so, uh, no special treatment. Um, you dox, you dox, you get suspended. End of story. Um, okay, so he stayed on this for a while, Musk did. And, um, and I was just on there. I just happened to come on. And I'm, I'm listening to uh, these some of the people. And one of the guys that was suspended from, I think, the Washington Post. Um, uh, but as, I, as of this morning, I noticed that Scarborough, who was suspended, is back on. But Rupar is not back. Um, I guess the real question is, uh, and we can all jump in here right now. Um, is Musk protected under the, uh, the legal axiom? Even assholes have rights. Is that yeah, kind of it? Of course. That he, he, he's he's protected so many different ways. He's protected statutorily because uh, when we're talking about Internet service providers or, or or people who just put content out, which is created by other people, you have absolute immunity. Uh, otherwise, imagine 
all everybody yahoo and the and the message boards and the chat rooms and the twitters if every time somebody puts something out there that was nasty ugly defamatory call it whatever you want now you go after the the deep pocket so the law says and it's section 230 if we want to get into the weeds that uh twitter is absolutely immune if i post something on twitter they can't edit it they can't play with it they can't do anything other than say oh thank you for your content here it's on immune from liability first amendment freedom of speech and infringing on the freedom of speech only applies to the government you would actually have to say twitter is an arm of the government to be able to make a first amendment claim okay, against okay. twitter for shutting you down all right so jojo is um is is a great writer and and she tweets um, really well and it's part of her livelihood now and it's a big part of her livelihood am i right joe well you're you you got to turn your mic back on there kiddo there it Sorry is okay I keep am hearing, i right i keep hearing elon <laughs> oh is he still playing there somewhere i hear him do you guys still thank hear elon thankfully no i don't hear elon thankfully i don't want to hear elon Please, no more Ever again. again. I'll get to you, Mr. Free the Press, in a second here. Hang well, on. Well, you're going to get suspended now for saying that. Oh, yeah. well, <laughs> right now, this is broadcasting on Twitter. So who knows? So um, but let me ask you this, Joe. So obviously, um, has that entered your mind? Because you don't really hold back on your tweets, which I love. Oh, it's no. Unfortunately, it's constantly on my mind, which is terrible. Yeah. Because it shouldn't be. It wasn't before. I never thought about that. You know what I mean? So I just worry so, about any of that so does does elon if, if he kicks her off arbitrarily that affects her career her, her livelihood um is that actionable randy does he have the right to do that first of all again it, this is a private company the terms of service specifically say i can kick you out for any reason or no reason at all and then as i said section 230 you have the immunity first amendment again i mean chip you could shut my mic down right now isn't that technically infringing upon my freedom of speech if you don't like what i'm saying you no. can kill you could kill my mic that no, I, I can't right. sue you for violating okay. my so, first amendment rights so let's go to a guy who's cons whose mouth has constantly got him in trouble over the years and actually to the point where the white house uh took his press pass away at one point uh which is defensible i mean i guess right well, but anyway I won three times in court so i guess it was defensible <laughs> so screw it so uh, you were surprised by what happened by this bloodbath, weren't you, Brian? Yeah, I was a little I was a little surprised. And then again, I wasn't. I mean, I was surprised it was Aaron. I was surprised it was uh, Washington Post reporters. But I'm not surprised that Elon took that uh, stance. And I don't really care. I'm just going to say what I think. And if he wants to kick me off, screw him. Yeah, I don't really give a damn. Yeah. Like, it, 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 the bottom line is, look, man, uh, it's not a violation of the First Amendment. It's a violation of the of the ideals of free speech, but you're free to do that. There are two assholes arguing. One guy owns the company, another guy disagrees with him. He can do whatever the hell he wants. Unless the government has a stake in it, as Randy was saying, there's absolutely nothing that can be done, and there's nothing that should be done. Um, you know, the, the idea that uh, we have to be... I, I think Elon Musk has the wrong idea of what free speech is, and I, ha I think he makes excuses when people say stuff he doesn't like, but that makes him, I don't know, the same as Donald Trump without, you know, the, without the uh, curse of having him served as president. So uh, I've seen his type before. They're replete throughout our history. Yeah. They're morons. They're poltroons. They're people with, who claim that they know everything and know nothing. They have money, but haven't the idea how to wipe their own bottoms. So, you know, I, I really don't care a damn what Elon Musk thinks or says. I'll say what I'll say and sure. it's my big fat flaccid ass. But I go back to Joe and I think about her and others. Um, and, and also these a lot of these um, um, think tanks and also these uh, super PACs that are out there. Um, uh, so if a super PAC is out there like Midas Touch, Really American, and, and dozens of others, uh, and they're raising money for uh, political debate and for, you know, for awareness. Again, all falls under the umbrella of this is this is my country, this is my business. If you don't like it, go somewhere else, Randy. Does that thing go forever? Is there any end to that? In terms of what, Chip? I want to make sure I understand well, let's the question. Let's go back to Joe. 
<clears throat> All right. So, you, Joe, when you sometimes put a tweet out, that's just, does it ever ask you, you know, are you sure you want to say that, that kind of All thing? All the time. Where, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I get that too, right? And actually, yeah, I kind of like that. Out. They love me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I get that algorithm occasionally that asks me that. And I appreciate it sometimes because I'm, I'm really pissed when I'm about to send a DM or, or a tweet out to someone that has, again, this is the, the, the issue. And you know this true. Um, there may be people breaking federal laws out there of uh, intimidation and threats. And, and um, I don't know, is this libel or slander? What would that be, Randy, if you're typing in on Twitter? Well, if you're, if you're writing something, it would be libel. If you're saying something, it would be, uh, it would be slander. Okay. All right. All right. Well, anyway, so well, we lost Joe, but I mean, I, I think of Joe and I think about these, there she is. I think about the people um, that, um, that have used this platform along the way. And, and, and you're saying essentially that they are on their own pretty much, right? That they, they can be tossed anytime. Oh yeah. I mean, I, the thing is, I think a lot of us are now in fear all the time. Um, it doesn't change anything that I tweet. Um, my content is still my content. In fact, I'll tweet about Elon all day long. He claims that that's okay, but that the line was his family, his location. Yeah. Um, but it's just, there's so much hypocrisy that it's, it's insane. But I mean, if you read the onion piece about just please like me, I kind of like sums him up, you know, like he, He's doing all of this when he's, he's supposedly the second richest man in the world and he should be busy doing other things. But instead, this is where he's getting his rocks off right now. And he's very much seeing everything, all the content that's out there with his name attached to it. I know personally from friends of mine who've had their accounts shut down for offending him. Um, yeah, it's a perpetual concern of mine. I just learned very recently that there's a ghost ban on my account, which a lot of uh, Brooklyn dad, too, has the ghost, the ghost ban. ban? I had to look it up. It's basically a shadow ban. It looks like your account is running totally normally, but you're getting suppressed in the algorithm. So it's not being shown. Oh, I know that works for me. I, I see with my videos and I also know that. Um, but again, again, back to Randy, this all falls under the umbrella. I can do whatever I want under certain, I mean, like I, as, a, as an editor, and that's what they are. Um, I mean, I know that Brian, look at Brian, uh, but I, I, get, I get it, dude. But you know, like, not every you you're published and you know you put a book out and, and and you know a million people can read it for a lot of people this marketplace is where people are trying to do what you're doing and they have a guy who is i don't know if he's mentally ill or or what but he is i, I think we got to look at it differently i don't okay I, I don't think we live in fear of him canceling us go ahead cancel us throw us in that briar patch you well, someone, should start, someone should start a, a Twitter for everyone, everyone who's been kicked off. Yes. Twitter. Well, they have, they're doing it. But, you, you know, there's an interesting, there's an interesting legal argument that someone at some point is going to advance. And it's this. Elon Musk talks so much that one of the things he's been talking a lot about and people have been talking a lot about is that before he came on, that Twitter was in bed with the left, was in bed with the Democrats and was suppressing all kinds of ugly stuff, for example, about Hunter Biden. So Elon Musk ought to be really careful because somebody will be able to argue, you know something? You just got done saying that Twitter's in bed with the government, that makes Twitter an arm of the government, and now the First Amendment does apply. Wow. Well, well just to pick up well, on that. Apply, especially if there was a, a fiduciary uh, type of... Uh, or, or an economic uh, relationship between the government. And if you could prove that, then, uh, boy, you'd really have them. But well, they were right, back with PayPal. Remember with the PayPal and the relationship yeah. they were getting? Yeah. I mean, it does happen. <clears throat> but look, the truth is, before Musk, uh, all, you know, what was happening is, is there was disinformation uh, from groups, whether it was about the election or it was about COVID or, again, you know, so it's straight out lies. And they wanted to put pictures of, of Hunter Biden's penis that came off his laptop somehow. And it, obviously the Biden administration didn't want that. I mean, and, and the truth is, is I guess is, I, I don't even know where all those laws stand right now, Randy, but I do know that we all have the same feeling that um, the, the wrong guy's in charge. And, well, and uh, you're right. Listen, fundamentally, the problem is there's no longer anything objective. I mean, disinformation, 
is is that even an That's objective concept anymore? Because That's if so many goal. people believe it, is it disinformation or is the other side now the ones guilty of operating in a world of disinformation? That's the scariest part. You know, well, like, Elon, Elon was asked. That one Hang on, Brian. Hang on, Brian. What, what, Joe? Elon was asked on Twitter by a Twitter user with so much free speech out there now, how do I decipher what's true? And Elon's answer was, you decide. You decide what's true. And that's what he's doing. He's essentially saying that facts are something that we can decide on our own, that there's no such thing as a fundamental truth or an actual fact. That's terribly dangerous. Let, 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 all right, first of all, you gotta, you got to separate those two words, facts and truth. All right, if you want truth, that's two doors down, see the philosophy professor. Facts are vetted facts, and you can determine your truths. But the, what Randy's talking about, the well, how we end up in chaos, how we end up with authoritarianism, how we end up with despots, is when there is no agreement on what facts are. Okay, which, but Brian. Which is what these people <clears throat> are doing are allowing you to create your own facts and therefore make your own reality. Right, but you know, Brian, you and I both know I can nuance any fact you give me right now. And I can turn it into something else. A great example would be a vaccine. I can tell you that vaccines don't save anyone's lives. And the truth is they don't. What happens is your body, the vaccine goes into your body. Your body gets uh, more prepared for when you're attacked by a, a virus. And then you can do it. You want whatever the hell you want. What the I'm just facts, saying. The facts are simple. The sun rises in the east. The facts are the, the man landed on the moon. The facts is, you know, that we're, we're not. You know, the Q where, where does the sun rise if I'm on the shuttle? I'm telling you, you have to accept some facts to yeah, argue I, with. I do. I agree. But if you don't. Then it's and, 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 and to both of your point, once upon a time, when we talk about separating fact from truth, you would accept a fact. You might not agree with it. So it might not be your truth, but you're cool with it. Now, it's there's no more separation anymore. Exactly. Fact and truth become one and the same. So who do you believe? Once upon a time, when Ronald Reagan took, for example, the podium and spoke, even if you didn't necessarily agree with him, you What's took what he was saying as true. You believed in your government leaders. You, again, you may not always agree with them, but you didn't think that they were out to get you. You didn't think that one side was out to get the other. There were instances where we could all be OK and well, we yeah. would trust what was being said, again, even if we didn't agree with it. That no longer exists. There are people who will say the world is flat. And people are actually going to say, oh, well, if he's saying it, well, I'm, I'm on board. I promise you, if Donald Trump took the stage in his Superman outfit tonight and decided, you know what? I am proclaiming as super Trump, the world is flat. Yeah. A portion um, of his base is going to buy in that and try to walk walk all the way across the world and say, "See, I didn't fall off." Uh, you know, it's funny you mentioned that because, of course, Trump got it. Um, um, is it NFTs? Yeah, when just when that thing had cratered, and, it, and and then he claims today that they were sold out. Hey, can we, can we leave on a funny note here, real quick? All right, I think it's funny. Here Hello, everyone. This is Donald Trump. Hopefully, your favorite president of all time, better than Lincoln, better than Washington. That person was president of the United States. With an important announcement to make. Trump promised a big announcement. I thought he was going to say something like, Marjorie Taylor Greene is my running mate. Very excited about that. Or Melania had escaped. But instead, he reverted to his real grift origins. Trump digital trading cards. While waiting to be indicted by at least four different prosecutors or grand juries, Trump is trying to sell digital baseball cards of himself. Digital trading cards are $99. Buy one and you will join a very exclusive community. I swear, it's so god-awful embarrassing, I almost feel bad for him. They also make perfect gifts. Trump never wanted to be president. It was always just another con. I'm also doing Zoom calls, a one-on-one -on -one meeting, autographing memorabilia. Autographs, a night at Mar-a-Lago, a top secret document, all for sale. The art of the deal was Trump's calling card, but it might be time to write a new ending. Goddamn right. Sexy time. Who's with me? Woo! Winning. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just say I love Borat? I swear to God, I can watch that guy 24-7 and still laugh. <clears throat> I sometimes think... 
Donald Trump for four years and laughed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, obviously we, nobody knows where this is going, um, but it's obviously, at least in, in the opinion of Randy, it's not headed towards a courtroom anytime soon. No, it, here's what it's headed towards. It, it's decentralization of the message. It will chase some people away. Some will stay. Some will be on multiple platforms. The influence of Twitter will fade as other uh, different platforms rise. It's it, it, the marketplace will out. <laughs> and if and if capitalism teaches us anything, it's that somebody's going to make some money doing something contrary to him. So it, it's all part and parcel. Part of look, Elon Musk got into this chip because he he saw Jeff Bezos. He wanted to own a media company. He thought this was the new media company, so he bought into it. Should should uh, Twitter and other platforms be regulated? That's a, a, a topic to be taken up by Congress, which will never decide on anything, or a blue ribbon commission by the president of the United States to determine whether or not these are de facto media uh, conglomerates and groups. Otherwise, Randy's absolutely right. Forget it. There's mm-hmm. nothing you can do, and the market will the market will out, and there'll be somebody else who put out another platform that they'll love, and they'll, everyone will flock to that, or this guy will back off and it'll go back to being what it was. Uh, well, let me just r- recommend that you guys check out Jojo from Juras on Twitter. Great stuff there. And um, I love her stuff on Twitter. Yes, we really do. It really <laughs> makes me Thanks. laugh all the time. Thank you so much, Joe, for being Thanks, here. Thanks, guys. And Thank Brian, you. for your I love your crankiness. Uh, I know it's, it's not even well, morning. I don't even have morning coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and Randy, your insight. Always welcome, my friend. Thank you, guys. All right. Be well. Good weekend, all. Bye. Bye. Yeah, yeah. Have a great weekend, everybody. Um, all right. So uh, obviously, if you if you're not on Twitter, and a lot of people aren't, or you know, my wife got into Twitter uh, in 2016 and uh, loves it, and drives her crazy because obviously, you know, they track what you like. Probably not as good as, as some other platforms, but they're getting better. And now we have to, of course, figure out. You know, again, for people, as I mentioned, like with JoJo, I mean. Um, single mom and she's making a living now doing this and she's very good and people she has a patreon account and i and i look at that and i think you know what musk is doing is is um it's a game when it's a lot of people others lives and, and livelihoods all right uh as you've been i just saw this the other day that uh flipped me out uh and uh oh with obviously with the latest on covid um um and just trying to you know that apparently corpses may spread COVID. I just I just saw that. I like really. You can make you want to make this any worse. Um, so the latest that we're just trying to figure out. Um, you know, again with COVID and flu cases on the rise. You know, wh- where are we with all this? You know, and that's a good question. We turn now to the rise in flu and COVID cases across the country. Officials in New York City and Los Angeles County once again urging people to wear masks indoors. And in California's Alameda County, face coverings are now required in some settings. This as the number of people hospitalized with the flu remains at its highest level in more than a decade. Here's ABC's Rena Roy. Tonight, COVID mask policies making a comeback. Face coverings now required in high-risk indoor settings like shelters and jails in Alameda County, California, which includes Oakland, and strongly recommended in Los Angeles County and New York City. Experts concerned with COVID cases and flu-like illnesses roughly 1.5 times higher than last week. I absolutely understand people's reluctance about masks, particularly in children. But if you actually want to keep kids in school and you want to make sure the schools are staffed, it turns out that masks are actually, especially during a surge like this, one of the best ways we can keep kids healthy. All that illness. Okay, now I say that. Okay, and because we obviously we we understand about masks, of course, masks and vaccines. That's a big part of of where we are right now. But um, I just want to show you a tweet from um, again, I, 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 you know, I have to do it, but it's Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, tweeted this last week. So many people still wearing masks. I just want to ask you if a pair of underwear, really thick ones, high quality cotton can't protect you from a fart, then how will a mask protect you from COVID? That's an elected representative uh, of our country. So I don't know. Uh, Joining us right now is infectious disease specialist uh, Rick Heller. Uh, Rick, um, was all of this predictable that we would, that, that COVID um, such a such a contagious virus uh, would come back this strong. 
is it predictable? Yeah, it was, it's, it's predictable and it was predicted. And it's predicted that we're just in the, uh, in the low numbers right now. As compared to last year, we're about the same. And now we're going up to maybe 10 times as much as uh, last year in LA, 15 times from where we wow. are today. Um, obviously, you know, vaccinations help. I still wear a mask when I go into a grocery store. Um, I still wear a mask. I mean, I, I haven't been in, I've been inside a restaurant maybe three times in the past three years. Um, but I wear a mask when I go pretty much anywhere. Uh, like I went to Costco yesterday and I wore a mask and I think there were like 15 of us and all that Christmas shopping and every, everywhere. And, and I felt uncomfortable to be honest with you. So I guess the question is, um, you know, moving forward, uh, the, this, this deadly trio of RSV, flu, and COVID. Um, is, is this trifecta? I mean, is this really, uh, uh, are we looking at 2020 kind of numbers? No way, right? I hope not. Well, uh, your uh, 2021 numbers were uh, were the worst. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, right. And and that was in light of the fact that already uh, vaccines had been rolling out. Uh, now we're heavily vaccinated as compared to uh, last year. And yet, you know, we're still running at 60, 70 percent uh, rates. So I think that we're uh, I think we're going to just reenter uh, what we had last year. It's it's not a happy prediction, but it is the case. We see it with flu all the time. But there is there is a model to look at this through. And it all has to come back to uh, atmosphere because it comes in the winter. Uh, there's, <clears throat> and there's, there's a lot to that, but then it comes down to our lungs, which is, you know, biophysical. And then it gets down to, uh, or a little bit in the middle is HVAC. So our heating, ventilation, air conditioning is actually just recirculating the atmospheric moisture. Now, I won't give you too many numbers, but I do have to say one thing with regard to that. And that's that the uh, moisture you can tell not from relative humidity, for example. Right now, I'm gonna give you a few numbers. Relative humidity, San Francisco, LA, Dallas, Guadalajara is a very interesting one. These are all high relative humidity. It turns out the Guadalajara, not so much. But this thing called the dew point, which you can get on any, you know, it's not interesting to most people, but it is if you're a tennis player or runner, you know, you want to get out there under 70 degree dew point. doesn't matter what the temperature is. Maybe the radiation matters. But uh, when you get into those uh, lower dew points, you just feel great. The sweat evaporates and all that. But when you exhale and you are sick, that virus and even bacteria, similarly, that virus is going to be uh, is going to be what we call live virus. And usually in high humidity environments, it is, uh, it's dead on arrival on exhale. So these masks are actually protecting us from people who are sick or might as well uh, might be sick. And so conversely, uh, people that wear the masks um, are protecting other people as well. And yeah, that, and, yeah. and that's some, something to do with uh, asymptomatic spread. But we see it mostly. The, the largest amount of spread comes from people who are symptomatic, should know it, probably know it, and go out in public for you know a variety of reasons. Okay, I want to play you this little piece from ABC. And this really bothers me. And it bothered me before the pandemic. And it has to do with you know um, the, the flu vaccine in general. What we need to do is make sure that you're planning your holiday around your most vulnerable, newborns, elderly, immunocompromised, and make sure that we're protecting those vulnerable populations by wearing a mask, by staying home if you're sick, if you've been exposed to flu or RSV or COVID, stay home. As Anne said, test for COVID, ensure you have good ventilation. And we do have vaccines. We have the vaccine against flu that's a good match, and we have those COVID boosters that are so essential right now. But John, can I ask you about that? Because our whole family got the flu shot and we all got the flu. So I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with the whole flu shot thing. I, oh, that kills me, Rick. All right. The again, this is the this is how people's brains work, right? You know that. Well, I, I last year I didn't get a flu shot and I didn't get the flu. That means I don't need a flu shot to not get the flu. And of course, 
you know, the, the it's just a, it's bad reasoning. But to have an ABC anchor come out and say that and not really. And the guy comes back on to say, hey, it doesn't work everywhere. A flu shot doesn't doesn't mean you're not going to get the flu. It will reduce the severity should you get exposed. You must see this all the time. It's got to drive you crazy. But I mean, this is Rick Keller, our, 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 our again, our, our guest here, Dr. Rick Keller. I appreciate it. Um, but this is right. I mean, this is hard to, to, to have this discussion with people when they reason like that. Yeah, it's just uh, I, I just it's it's a it's a problem of very small numbers. You know, even in the worst of COVID, we were at 0.25 percent, maybe 0.5 percent, which was uh, uh, over all the population at a given moment in time. So, you know, we th we're not going to necessarily get it. In fact, the numbers are against us to get it. But I will tell you the coincidence, and I take great care, my wife takes great care of uh, herself and people around her. And uh, she came home from Las Vegas with uh, diagnosed flu A, and that was just four weeks ago, five weeks ago. Within three days, I had COVID. I can't explain it. This is just a single data point. Uh, uh, four days later, my mother had COVID. I wasn't even around her. Hmm. So, so, I mean, there's nothing you can surmise from that, but it's alive and it's well, circulating. My wife got COVID the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Um, I was in bed with her that Monday night and, and she's coughing and thinking she's getting the, the flu because we never go anywhere, Rick. OK, I mean, we you know, we see a same group of people and we generally see them. I live in San Diego, so we go to the beach and have a fire. We're all separated from each other. Only a couple people in that group. Now, everybody in that group has had the flu except me and one other spouse. And I was with my wife that whole time she was in the house. She still can't fully taste or smell. Uh, and her back has been bothering her. So she still she got a little bit of the long COVID, but I, it's beginning to come back. And I've heard people say it could take up to a month or so to get your taste and smell back, maybe longer. But I guess the, you know, there's so much we don't understand about this virus. And, and I mean, there's a possible chance that I did get exposed and I just didn't have any symptoms, right? Yeah, uh, uh, that's correct. But it's uh, unlikely that you spread and certainly that you spread in large numbers. Only 10% of the people infected are spreading 90% of the disease. And this is the same with flu and it's not unusual. So it has to do with a thing called presenteeism, which is the opposite of absenteeism. But there is a salvo to this besides masking. Masking really helps if you are sick and you don't know it, or you just, for whatever reason, you gotta go out in public, the masking knocks down about 90, 95% of the uh, of the virus. In the case of somebody who's well, you put on the mask, you get about a 10 or 20 percent benefit. And that's worth it. But the, the final thing is, is that all of this discussion about humidity, which is exactly what goes on in the winter, the northern hemisphere, our summer, uh, I mean, our winter, what the bottom line is, is to drink water and 64 ounces really? of water. Absolutely. And that's what hydrates your lungs, your lungs I have an immune system and they're actually sort of the outside of your skin. They're actually skin inverted. And if you hydrate, you, uh, you allow that immune system to work. And that's where it's entering. It's entering through uh, a number of places in your body, but it's almost all respiratory. And that's why we get the respiratory and that's why we spread it. 64 ounces. What is that? Like seven or eight glasses of water, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's hard to imagine you get used to it. I just put a little grapefruit juice in all my water and, and I buy cans of, uh, you know, uh, mildly, uh, what do you call it, uh, flavored water. Well, I think that, um, you know, uh, you, when you talked about the mask and I still, I mean, I still hear people that just don't buy into it. And it's, it's, it's got to be frustrating for a physician um, as well as, as for an infectious disease specialist. I mean, when people say that we don't need masks, I go, well, next time you have to get surgery done, tell your doctor not to wear a mask, you know? Um, but, but that's of course, whatever. All right. The, the name of your company is well, wello inc.com. W yes. right. W Hello. Wello. Yes. Well <laughs> Rick, I really appreciate it. It's always good to see you again. Yeah. Stay well, my friend. Okay. You too. Bye Thank bye. you again. Uh, infectious disease specialist, Rick Keller, you just heard it, right? I mean, that's where we are. Uh, and, and the problem, of course, moving forward with, you know, the preponderance of ignorance. When I, I showed you that Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, tweet 
that, um, you know, if thick underwear can't stop a fart. I mean, this is, these are the people that want to bring Fauci before them. And, um, and of course, you know, it's, it's frustrating, I think for me, uh, in, in that, you know, I've, 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 I've been fortunate, uh, to have this radio show. I've been, I've been doing talk radio since 1993. Right. So I've gone through a lot of different things, you know, over the years. I mean, the very first thing I remember in Washington, D.C. was the O.J. Simpson case um, because I went on the air and there was no Internet per se. There was no cable TV, really. Uh, so we just grabbed newspapers and, and people would call in. And, and I, actually, I, I, it's funny, you know, I, I thought about this. I wrote a book about talk radio that I, I never published. But, you know, part of this is is to me fascinating that uh, that we cannot um, we cannot get this kind of information to people despite the, the opportunities we have with the Internet uh, that we have with just so many, so many, uh, you know, so many people like like the people you've heard before. Rick Heller, I'm just kind of stuttering here because I'm trying to get my, another guest on. We just had a bit of a problem. Uh, but I do believe, though, that there is something here for all of us. I'm going to get to your uh, emails here in just a second. By the way, if you'd like to be part of this, uh, you can just log on anytime. I would also ask you to please subscribe to our channel uh, at um, What the Franklin or at Chip Franklin. And um, we will, of course, have, you know, we'll keep doing this. Uh, as long as you keep watching, uh, we post these everywhere as well. All right. Um, let me get to some of your, your comments here while I wait for uh, a guest. Um, you yeah, know, this is interesting. Uh, Russ says one guy I know had COVID didn't realize it hopped on a plane to go to a wedding. And now a bunch of people at the wedding have it. But I, I, you know, I wonder about that. I wonder, you know, Russ, when we look at cases like that, we, we don't have the ability to track, uh, COVID like that. Um, Anyway, so we'll get to this. Uh, the, Laurie has one too as well. Severe flu can damage a heart, so decreasing severity is still useful. And that's the point here. That's the whole, thank you so much, Laurie. The point about these uh, vaccines, and again, I've, I've had the fortune the last four years to speak to everybody from Dr. Fauci to uh, leading uh, virologists and epidemiologists, and they all come at me with the same, same uh, result. Do everything you can to prepare your body for this possible infection. That's what it's all about. Um, uh, one more here before I get to our next guest. Uh, Laurie says, doesn't have to be water flu, it's just high moisture fruit. The whole thing about having to do HDO is a fallacy. Hydration is key. Um, can coffee hydrate me? Because that's my go-to. All right, uh, so a friend of mine uh, was telling me the other day, he goes, uh, you know, Hanukkah's coming up and uh, I'm gonna buy all these clients gifts for Hanukkah and it's deductible. And I said, uh, are you a tax attorney? And he goes, no, but I'm, I'm sure it's deductible. I really is. And of course, at the end of the year, everybody's trying to figure out their taxes for the next year. And I think this guy is looking at, at this as a real possibility. So why not bring in somebody that knows? And that would be a tax attorney extraordinaire, Steve Moskowitz from MoskowitzLLP.com. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks so much, Chip. And like so many times for do-it-yourselfers, they may get part of it right. Business gifts are deductible up to the princely sum of twenty five thousand. Excuse me, twenty five dollars a year. Really? Yeah. So wow. So if so, you give somebody a, a business gift of, or it costs you a hundred bucks, you don't get to deduct hundred bucks. You only get to deduct twenty five bucks. Hmm. So in other words, um, and that um, is that just one gift? What if I gave them like uh, so each gift is uh, only twenty five grand per person per $25, year. Twenty five dollars, not grand. I'm sorry, twenty five dollars. You 25, may give people twenty five dollars, twenty five grand. Not twenty five grand, twenty <laughs> twenty five dollars. So if if you give a business client a hundred dollar gift a month, your total deduction for the years is twenty five dollars. Therein lies the problem. Wow. So smarter thing is if you want the deduction, why don't you take them out to a nice Christmas dinner, and at least you get a bigger deduction than twenty five dollars. Right. You get the whole thing right now. That, that, that changed, didn't it? Didn't it used to be that you, you could not. Well, you tell me, because I know I remember that, was, that, that's going back and forth for COVID to try to help out the restaurants. And, oh. you know, Congress has done a lot for the restaurants like they had RRF. You know, we, we've talked about PPP and ERC so much, a lot. but there was also RRF, Restaurant Revitalization Fund, where the Congress has just given the money away. That's why this year. 
there, I think there's going to be some tremendous tax increases because, first of all, we have enforcement with these new 87,000 IRS agents the IRS is hiring. And then, you know, the government's spending a lot of money, whether it's on the, all these government programs for COVID. Tremendous money has been sent out. You know, we talk about ERC all the time. Well, somebody has to pay for it. Who is that? That's us, the taxpayers. Mm. Not to mention what's being spent in Ukraine. Not to mention everything else, all these other programs. So there's a tremendous burden. It's, it's not an accident or coincidental. They happen to want to hire these extra 87,000 IRS agents. Um, I, one of the other things I want to ask you is, is, and I think a lot of people are thinking this right too, right now, Steve, um, you know, we got a couple of weeks left for, before the end of the year. Um, if I realize I might need a few more tax deductions and I want to make a purchase, um, for example, I want to purchase a computer, but their stock is way behind. It, can I pay for it now, even though it's going to be delivered like in February? Yes, you can. And that's typical classic tax planning where you say, OK, here it is. It's December 16th. I got a couple of weeks to hurry up and spend some money, because if you buy that new computer today, you get a tax deduction on your 2022 tax return. If you go ahead and buy it January 2nd, you have to wait an extra year. And then also we have things like with depreciation. Most of those things we can write the entire amount off because of Section 179 and bonus depreciation as opposed to depreciating it over a period of time. And that's true for much larger purchases, too. Um, one last question, because we this came up earlier. We had one of our guests on who's on Twitter, and she makes um, a, most of her living on Patreon. So people give money to her to support her um, uh, for her, um, her work on Twitter. Um, if, if somebody were to give that money to someone that, and I mean, like, say, for example, I want to give her like $50, does that gift thing still apply? Is that considered a gift in, in Patreon when you're helping somebody with cash as opposed to actual buying them something? The definition of a gift is something with dis disinterested generosity. So if you have a gift, you're limited to that. On the other hand, if you're paying for something, that's a different story. So if you're paying for a service, if it's a business service, if it's tax deductible, you can deduct it an unlimited amount. See, look, that's why we have you here, my friend. Uh, MoskowitzLLP.com is the uh, website. And uh, that's, of course, Steve Moskowitz, who joins us uh, quite frequently to help us answer these difficult questions, especially now when we're looking at the end of a year. Of course, pensions, that's a whole other thing. We'll talk about that next time. How about that? Um, that's a tremendous savings, people. I love talking about that. All right, buddy. Take care. See you guys. Thanks guy. so much. Again, uh, Steve Moskowitz, Moskowitz LLP, uh, who sponsors this show as well. But, um, you know, I can honestly say that uh, the seven years I've known him uh, have been beneficial and, and more than just a friendship. He's just a really, really smart guy and can help you out in many ways. All right. Um, great. By the way, <laughs> I love the Internet. I mentioned earlier about how I drink so much coffee and I should drink more water. And uh, of course, everybody jumped right in here. Um, uh, the coffee and tea can hydrate, but hydration effect is lessened because caffeine is a diuretic source, makes you pee it out faster. She goes, I miss Dean Adele. Um, oh, thank you so much. You know what? I think of Dean Adele. I think of my good friend, uh, Heather Haman, who was my producer for a while. And uh, and of course, a good friend as well as Nikki. Did she work for, Doc for Dean Adele? Is that who yeah. she worked for? She yeah. was the producer. Yeah. For Dr. Dean Adele. And yeah. uh yeah, I think they had some sort of reunion. And I, th I think that he showed up. Yeah, he did. Because our old engineer, Karen, had the hugest crush on him. Oh, she Dina. loved Dr. Dina Dell. Yeah. So <laughs> she got a picture with him. I mean, she had this S eaten grin on her face. It was awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we had uh, we had a fun first half hour talking about uh, Musk and what happened yesterday. And I got to tell you this story, and I apologize okay. to people that were here earlier that saw it. So I was last night, I just was on Twitter because I was looking for some guests to come on in this first segment to talk about, you know, his banning these journalists, which made, you know, front page news, big deal. Um, however, it was interesting. I, I saw there was one live Twitter spaces, and I don't really pay attention, but there were like 4,500 people in it. And I thought, oh, this must be interesting. And it was by a journalist for BuzzFeed. And who else but was in that was Elon Musk was in there defending his decision to get rid of these people saying that they were doing a thing called doxing him. You ever heard of that before? Yeah. Doxing. Yeah. That's when you find out somebody's address and that's the whole, that's when I he had the whole problem with, with the Elon jet Twitter handle that he banned, even yeah. though it shouldn't be, we're going to touch on it a little bit, but yeah, doxing is terrible. 
I mean, you got doxxed, Chip. When somebody shows up and leaves that you don't know and leaves messages at your house and yeah. lets you know that they know where they live, that's doxing someone. And not only that, spreading it on the internet so other people join in. And it's frightening, but that's the internet nowadays. And you put too much of your information online, people will know where you are. Oh, they can find it. Uh, yeah. Everything's findable. I mean, exactly. and that's the scary part about, you know, what's what, what the web is right now. I mean, you that's can go and pay somebody 20 bucks and get somebody's address and all, you know, less than that, basically. I mean, you could do it yourself. It's scary. But at the same time, you know, you, you hope that there's more good people than bad people out there. So, yeah, you know, and um, I mean, if Twitter went away, I would I'd be sad. I enjoyed I've made a lot of good. No, I made a lot of good. Friends it's not there. the same Twitter now. So I'm. it's like a slow breakup. That's what I feel like. I like Twitter, too. <laughs> I've made a lot of connections with people I've never met before, but only on that platform. But right now, Twitter isn't what it used to be. And so I don't know. I don't know how long it is uh, going to last, but we'll see. I don't know how long I'm going to well, stay it's on funny. it. I mean, I've, you know, over the um, the, the last three years. I mean, I made a ton of friends, people I never would have, you know, Jane Lynch, Rosie O'Donnell, yeah. um, although I did do a show with Rosie O'Donnell on uh, Stand Up Spotlight where she was the MC, and I, I was trying, she couldn't remember it. And then I told her one of the jokes and she remembered it, which is Ah, nice. there you go. But I mean, these are some of the guests we have coming up and people like, you know, I know I've known like Wanda Sykes since the early right. 80s and, and um, you know, Patton Oswalt and all these people that started started out at my comedy clubs, right? right? And we all kind of reconnected on Twitter, and you know, and I would have never had any conversations with Joe Walsh, the former congressman. Uh, Brooklyn Dad is now a good friend of mine. You know, right. um, I, I I do work for some super PACs. Really, American is a great super PAC that I do a lot of work for. So, I mean, I will miss it, not so much because of you know, free speech and the First Amendment and all that. Um, I just you know, it is. It is a coarser version of Facebook. Let's be honest. Well, yeah, it, it's it, the the platform, the stream, how people interact is is different, and I do like it. And speaking of Brooklyn Dad, by the way, uh, I actually was interacting with him and a bunch of his followers. Did you know he has never, for the first time, saw my cousin Vinny for the first time last week? You know, that's one of my favorite movies. I was I like, yeah. what? But that Oops. was a. Utes? Utes? What's a Ute? Oh my God. It was, and it was so funny, but I, I bring that up because it was amazing how many people were, you know, quoting the movie and getting back to him. And I will miss that about Twitter. Is it worth it? Is it worth everything else that we have to deal with on the platform? I'm not quite sure. What's the lead actress's name? She won the Academy. Marissa Award. Tomei, Marissa who Tomei. totally deserved it. I got into a back and forth with the guy who was like, really? An Oscar for that role? I'm like, what do you need to win an Oscar? an iconic movie that's quoted all the time. I mean, I have, I use lines from that movie in my real life that she has said. Well, I mean, it is as, an amazing movie. As a stand-up comic, and I've been doing stand-up since 1980, and I'm fucking amazing. And, um, sorry. To say it lightly, to say it, to lightly. Say it lightly. There we go. No, I mean, I've written for everybody from Steve <laughs> Allen to, to Jay Leno and blah, blah, blah. And I've done, I've done stand-up forever. So, but it's a craft, right? It wasn't like oh, I was course. born funny, you know, although I was. <laughs> Funny but, looking, but yeah, right. you got to work on the funny part. <laughs> but one of the things I've always said about an actor is if you think you're a great actor, show me you can do comedy. Oh, yeah. You I know, mean, if, it's so much harder. Can go, anybody can look in a camera and go. Well, but, yeah, you, know, you could have a war movie. You could do one of these bits, but make people laugh and have that movie stand the test of time. That's an old movie. And every time it is on, I watch that movie. I, I love mean, my cousin Vinny. Uh, Marissa Tomei comes to mind because she yeah. was in the big short and she played um, uh, ba uh, Baum's wife, remember? And talking talking to him when he, remember? That's the, I've only even... seen that movie once. I've okay. only seen that movie once. Well, she was Steve Carell's wife. And oh, okay. Was, and remember, his brother had killed himself, and she was trying to console him. She was, it was a small role, but a very great dramatic She's role. She's amazing. On the she flip is side, amazing. Robert De Niro in Midnight Run with Charles Grodin is mm. hilarious. Better, much better than Meet the Fockers and all that sort of stuff. This was a real, and you know, I look at people like that, and I, and I think to myself, Will Ferrell is if you go back and watch the movie he did with Emma Thompson, Stranger Than Fiction, where he played. Oh, yeah, that's a yeah, good I one. Mean, it's incredibly capable of that. It's funny, you oh, know, yeah. that, um, he, he hosts a golf tournament in San Diego for a charity. I can't remember. And I was in it. And there's a prize for getting closest to the hole, right, mm -hmm. on a par three. And I got about six inches away from a hole in one. And so I got a cowbell that he autographed. So he, you know, <laughs> afterwards, there's a dinner. So he gives me the cowbell. And I got talking about people we know in common. 
and I, I asked him about Stranger and Fixin, and he said, you know what? I, I, you know, people say I had a great performance. Emma Thompson walked me through every scene I did with her. And he goes, I was almost in every scene with her to some extent. Wow. And he goes, she was so amazing. And she's funnier than I am. And she just don't want, doesn't want to do a comedy, but she's hilarious. So it is, you know, really great. I, we go back. I, the reason I, I don't know, how would we get into this thing about uh, my cousin, Benny? Oh, Brooklyn Dad. Brooklyn the, Dad hadn't watched him. it yet, yeah. All right, we'll get to get out of here. So, I want to, uh, so what do you got coming up today? Your show starts uh, at 12. It's going to be live. It's a Friday show. We'll talk movies. I'm going to interview someone from Cal Matters about this tragic story of this kid who spent, like, oh, 19 years old, spent years in prison, never went to trial. They just released him, and they never explained what happened in our juvenile system and how basically broken it is. That'll come up. Tim Seek is talking movies. I don't know. I got a bunch Has of Has he seen Avatar? Do you know? Has he seen Well, it that's yet? what I'm going to talk to him about, definitely. I mean- oh. Yeah, I put on adult diapers to watch that movie, but you know. Oh, what is it? Five hours or something? Three hours long, man. And and I've been trained to stream my movies. I need oh, I to. You're going to say your urine. I've been trained. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I might see it. But I don't know. I don't. I haven't watched the original Avatar in a long time. I'd have to rewatch I it. I didn't like it. That I mean, it didn't blow me. It was away. okay. It was yeah. another long James Cam. What it was James Cameron did the last one Cameron, too. Yeah, Cameron. Yeah. Ugh, you realize so we'll that this it, odds are that he will have the top three grossing films of all time after this. Whatever. I mean, he's well, kind I mean, of a douchebag. He, I, the heard, guy knows so how to tap into people, and you know, again, and make long movies, basically. <laughs> All right. Well, Very yeah. Beforehand is is the Nikki Maduro advice. Yes, exactly. Have a great weekend, my friend. You okay? too. I'll see I'll you later. Talk. Bye, Bye Chip. Bye. Again, Nikki Maduro show kicks off on YouTube at noon, and uh, I, you know, I watch it as much as I can, or at least listen to it when I'm in the car. You can actually listen to YouTube this show, you know, when you're driving in your car as well. All right, my goal uh, as we go through the holidays is to um, to get some of the celebrities I've been promising to come on and talk, you know, sensibly a political, cultural show. Uh, but we do have some fun. Um, and uh, next week, we're going to start again with our top 10 list. It's just been kind of crazy as we get through the holidays. I won't be doing a show on Christmas Day. Well, it is a day after. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'm sure you'll get through your day if I don't do a show. All right. Anyway, uh, send me an email, chip at chipfranklin.com. Please uh, t tell your friends about this and get them to subscribe because it makes a big difference as we try to grow and try to get more people to see us and join us on a regular basis. Um, and, you know, in the days and weeks ahead, I think, you know, all of us, you know, that I say Nikki and I and others that are doing YouTube, YouTube TV, getting this on direct TV, bouncing it around. Um, it all starts with you guys. So we really do appreciate your time. Uh, you have a great weekend. And uh, remember, you can buy me a Christmas gift and only deduct twenty five dollars. But hey. What the heck? I can handle things. I'm a spy. We shall overcome. Yes, we can. Person, woman, man, camera, TV. What the fuck is wrong with you?